Hi, I'm Chris Island Cole. I'm an art teacher and I'm going to show you the process of photolithography on clay. The project that I did with my students were tile projects where they took the photos and we transferred them onto leather hard clay and then fired them. This is a process that was taught to me by Christina Bogdanov. She's the ceramics professor at Ohio Wesleyan University. So if you would like to see a more in-depth video, Christina has one on the ceramicsartsdaily.org site. Uh, so we'll go from there. Uh, you'll need to start with clay that is leather hard and you can do the tiles like I'm doing. You can do a flat surface but you can also do this on a three-dimensional surface as long as it's leather hard. You'll need to make an ink to make this process work and you're going to be doing that by mixing mason stains with linseed oil. And I've done this two ways. I've done it with three part stain and two parts oil and I've also done it with two parts stain and three parts oil and to be honest they both work. I got my stains from the Columbus Clay Company in Columbus, Ohio if you're interested in finding mason stains. So the stain mixed up with the oil looks like this. This is the viscosity you want. Um, there are different colors that you can use. This is a slightly more liquid one. They both seem to work. So to start with, you need to have your uh, leather hard clay, you need your ink, and you need some photocopies. Uh, you also need a surface to work on, and you need some gum arabic, a sponge, a pint of water with some gum arabic splashed in it, something to do your burnishing, a pair of tweezers. That should take care of you. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start out with the gum arabic and I'm going to pour some of this down onto my glass surface. And it doesn't have to be glass. It could be tile or vinyl or plexiglass. But you want just enough that you can spread this around nice and even. Big enough to lay your photocopy in. So I'm going to put the photocopy there and I'm going to take some more of this and rub it over so there's more gum arabic on the surface of the photocopy. It does have to be a photocopy by the way, it can't be a printer copy uh, because the gum arabic is actually reacting with the toner and making it sticky so that the ink will then stick to it. It's a good idea then to rub the extra gum arabic off before you start inking. So now I'm going to ink this. Excuse my dog. And you want to run this in one direction. You don't want to go back and forth because it could actually lift up the paper and roll up right around your brayer. The paper does get pretty fragile so be careful with that. So got one layer of my ink on there. I'm going to put a little bit more ink on here so I will need more. And then I'm going to take this pint of water that has some gum arabic splashed into it. And I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to just splash it right over the surface. And this is going to take off some of the ink from the white areas. I'll then blot up the extra before continuing. So blotting up this with some water and gum arabic. Okay, so Put on some more ink. You're actually going to do this entire process three times. Lift up and you can kind of see that the ink is now starting to stick to the toner. Take a little bit more water with the gum arabic splashed in it. Again, just splash it right over it and blot up any extra. 
So this is going to take up the ink from the white areas. And you can actually get some really detailed images this way. Um, you can have, uh, as, lo as long as you've got some high contrast, you can get your shades of gray and all in there. It looks, it looks good. You'll get some detail. Okay, so I need one more application of the ink. So you can see I'm doing this a total of three times. Different directions. And bear in mind now that my paper is pretty fragile because it is wet. One more time with rinsing. and blotting. And at this point, I'm going to, again, excuse my dog, I am again going to uh, blot this and then I'm going to turn it over, gently pick it up, and put it on the surface of my leather hard clay. I'm going to recommend that you wear some kind of uh, protection on your hands because the ink, uh, the mason stain does have uh, heavy metal in it. And you do want to be careful about handling heavy metal. Now you've got one shot to put this down. You cannot lift it back up uh, and reposition it. At this point I'm turning on my fan because I want the paper to dry a little bit before I burnish it too hard. I find that a fan works or you could use a um, blow dryer but then you can very gently start to burnish your image. So I'm just going around in circles applying light pressure over the entire image. You can, as you get into this, um, I'm not ready yet, but you, as you're starting to burnish this, uh, you can actually peel back a corner and check it to see if it's working. And as the paper dries out a little bit from the fan or the hair dryer, whatever you're using, or time, time works too, you could just wait if you wanted to, to let it dry a little bit before you burnish. Um, then you can burnish a little bit harder. So I'm going to peel back a little bit, see how this looks. It's starting to reveal itself, but I want to burnish a little bit more. We found actually that as the paper starts to turn a little bit white again, especially on the edges, that's when you uh, are going to have the best luck with your burnishing. So, as I finish burnishing, I can now lift this up and see that my image is revealed. At this point, I would then cut out my, my tile to the size that I want, and then you can let that dry, and you have a choice. You can either uh, put your glaze right directly on your dry greenware and fire at once, or you can do a bisque fire and then glaze fire with a clear glaze on top of it. You will need to put some kind of a clear glaze surface over this to protect the image. Even after it's been fired once in the bisque fire, this image will not be permanent until you have the glaze over it. So, I hope you have fun with this. Thanks.